Everything the Pleasure family cooks and eats revolves around their garden. We have gotten a lot of tomatoes from this one. Ten-year-old Joshua has been gardening since he was little. Right now, the family's community garden plot is planted with fall squash. Oh, I'm cooking literally every day with something that I've grown. Every day. Which I absolutely love because it saves trips to the grocery store. Joshua's mom, Janelle Pleasure, says food has always been central to her family. One of their favorite activities is to spin a globe, put a finger down, and cook a dish from that country. But they haven't done that since the start of the pandemic, when Pleasure says things got hard. There's not a belt to tighten. There's no wiggle room here. I have, you know, I'm unemployed, and there are limited things that I can do. She became a single mom of three kids when her husband left two years ago. Without his stream of income, it became difficult to afford the basics, including food. Then came the pandemic. She lost her job almost immediately, and when her kids' schools shut down, it meant no more school meals. She is, however, receiving $125 per month through an expanded food stamps program. Literally, $125 I can spend in like a week because my kids eat like grown men, like a football team. I don't know where they put it. Pleasure doesn't waste anything. Her kitchen counter is lined with jars of pickled vegetables from the garden, and her freezer is stacked with leftovers. A self-described coupon queen, she shows off her pantry, where she stockpiles food she finds on sale. They're organic, made with fruit juice, and they're like fruit pops, but these are normally, what did she say, six fifty nine, and I got them for a dollar. I was like... I'm going to take 40 of those. Thank you. And yet, sometimes it's not enough. That's when she pays a visit to the local food pantry, where her kids used to volunteer. When we actually had to be participants in it, I think maybe there was a little bit of confusion for them. Like, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but it maybe was a little shameful. Like, why are we here? Why do we have to do this? So I stopped bringing them because... Looking at that and looking at them, it made me feel like less of a parent. Pleasure is far from alone in the struggle to afford food. In fact, food insecurity rates for families with children have tripled during the pandemic. And families of color are even worse off. Black families like the Pleasures report rates of food insecurity twice that of white families. Experts say the easiest way for the government to help would be to increase food stamp benefits. Janelle Pleasure says she's grateful for the help she has received. That took like a huge weight off my shoulders because now I just have to worry about will the power be on, you know, as opposed to power or food. I'd rather my kids eat than have lights. Like, you know, we can get candles. Not a big deal. Even if it was in the dark, she says she's always been able to put some kind of food on the table. For NPR News, I'm Dana Cronin in Champaign, Illinois. Before COVID-19, Arizona's Tucson Unified School District dished out a lot of meals. A normal school day, we serve 35,000 total meals a day. That's breakfast, lunch, and supper. Lindsay Aguilar is the district's food services director. When I spoke with her earlier this month, she said the number of meals served so far this year had plummeted by nearly 90%. That's because lots of parents and caregivers are back at work and can't get to the meal pickup sites each day. It's disheartening because I know those kids, you know, they still are in need of the food and families are struggling even more now than ever. Aguilar says she feels a huge responsibility to do more to reach those kids who need those 35,000 meals a day. Realistically, I know I'm not going to get 35,000, but can I get 10? Can I get 12? Like, you know, how can I get these families to come or how can I get to them? I joke all the time, but I'm like, we need Amazon Prime out of our warehouse. <laughs> we come up with ways every week to find a new way to get meals to our kids. Alicia Wright heads the nutrition program for schools in Fulton County, Georgia. And she, like nutrition directors all over the country, says she's losing sleep thinking about how to reach the children who can't reach them. Every day. I worry about them every day. I think about it every night. Wright and her team are freezing hamburgers and lasagna rolls so they can pack a whole week's worth of meals into just one pickup. My best day was last week. 
That's because Wright and her team were testing a new plan to pack all that food onto a school bus to get closer to the kids who need it. Parents and caregivers were thrilled, Wright says, telling her, This is so great because we could not get to the food stop. We didn't have transportation. In Tucson, Aguilar and her team are also packing meals onto buses and delivering them at more than 60 stops. And it all matters, says researcher Lauren Bauer at the Brookings Institution, because one in five families say their kids aren't getting enough food and they don't have enough resources to buy more. That means that children are going hungry. And Bauer says the vast majority of kids who could be getting school meals aren't. While schools are doing everything they can to change that, Congress is also trying to help. In the spring, lawmakers created a program called Pandemic EBT. It basically took the value of those school meals that kids weren't getting and put it, usually a few hundred dollars, onto a debit card that families could then use at the grocery store. Lauren Bauer says Pandemic EBT reached a lot of families. And it kept between two and a half and three and a half million children out of hunger this summer. The program was set to expire by the end of September, but in a rare show of bipartisanship, the House recently voted overwhelmingly in support of an extension through fiscal year 2021. The Senate is expected to do the same.